Hello and welcome to the Portent webinar series. Today's presentation is Making Good SEO Reports with your host, Josh Patrice, which is me. Um, first off, if you're going to uh, tweet out any uh, learnings or questions or advice for your peers, anything like that, please hashtag it Portent U, P O R T E N T U. A little bit about myself, I'm the director of SEO here at Portent. I've been in the industry for over 10 years, started in PPC, moved into SEO, been in analytics uh, focused roles, as well as some user experience and information architecture. Uh, I've been an in-house agency, uh, SEO company, uh, marketing firm, etc. And I have a uh, passion for SEO reports and m more just for reporting this data um, the right way, wisely, and to multiple different audiences. So let's talk about the basics here. First of all, SEO reports today, I was looking around the web before I, before I made this webinar and uh, was poking into different, different services and seeing examples of their reports. And just about 80-90% of the guys out there are giving you screenshots of Google Analytics or screenshots of Moz. Uh, sometimes they'll put Google Analytics or Moz in their own formats with their own colors and graphics and stuff. An example of that's in the bottom left there. Um, it's just Open Site Explorer put into a different format. And then there's just, there's just a, an abundance of pie charts for no necessary reason. And why it's not working is that's, that's I mean, in my eyes, that's really a ripoff. Um, Google Analytics at its basic, you know, reporting structure is, 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 is going to be a, kind of a ripoff to your clients or um, it's going to sell your story short to your boss. Um, a lot of that stuff is very available. It's free. You can see it in a dashboard or something like that. And without any insight, it's not really saying anything. Um, a lot of times it's basic data. Uh, knowing your domain authority is great. Knowing your traffic is great. Knowing how many links are coming in is great. But without any, again, without any insights, you know, so what? And there's a great quote from uh, Avinash Kashik. If you see a data puke, then you know you're looking at the results of web reporting, even if it's called a dashboard. And we'll check in on the ending of that quote a little bit later. But I think it's a it's a good thing to remember when you're doing um, when you're building SEO reports uh, is that without any analysis, there's really no point in just communicating data that communicates itself. So what I want you to focus on KPIs, the work that you've actually done over the last month last week, last two weeks, what, however frequent you report. Uh, there's a, hand, a handful of ancillary metrics that are really handy. And then um, last but not least is prioritization of, of everything that you're giving um, your boss or your client or even yourself sometimes. So next thing I want to talk about is just how easy this is. Um, really, to pull this off, you need your analytics platform and Excel or spreadsheets or whatever program you like to use. That's all you really need. Well, except yourself. Um, the difference between a good SEO report and a bad one is the ability to put in that human uh, element of insight and evaluation and analysis. So what are we going to focus on? KPIs and goals. A good KPI is going to be something specific. Uh, it's going to be something that you can actually um, influence and filter. So something like organic unique visitors is something you have control over. <laughs> You're trying to get a new visitor to the site from an organic channel. A bad KPI would be, on the flip side of that, would be something like traffic. Traffic is great, right? Especially if your site is selling um, ad space and you need just more visitors, more visitors, more visitors, right? Or more accurately, more visits, visits, visits. But traffic is not a great one to measure SEO by because 
in the end, you could have content that just keeps bringing the same person back, but it's not actually helping your business's, you know, bottom line. So it's important to, you know, be able to craft these KPIs um, in a sense that makes sense (laughs) for SEO. So organic conversion rate is another one. Organic revenue is good. Straight up conversions, it's not a bad KPI necessarily. I mean, it's in the column, but it's not necessarily the worst KPI. But if I get 100 conversions tomorrow, I could say, look at that, look at what I did. But if the traffic went up by 10,000, then my conversion rate is actually not improved, or maybe it went down. Well, that's that's the inverse of, of good. <laughs> we want our conversion rates to go up with our, uh, with our efforts and, and with our traffic. So... Um, It's important to look at those types of KPIs. And then on top of that, uh, one thing that always bothers me is when we just give a KPI and you say, well, there we go, it's improving. Well, it's important that we set goals. Um, And it can be scary a little bit, and especially for SEO where everything is so dependent on, um, you know, not only your audience, but also Google who holds, you know, all the cards here. But... Setting out a you know a modest yet challenging goal of percent growth or percent improvement year over year is going to make it that much more impactful when you can hit your KPIs. Uh, the next thing that we're going to focus on is the work that you've done. So if you fixed the canonical issue, if you redid title tags, if you moved a blog from the subdomain to a subfolder, um, optimize the entire category, you know, it's important to let your client know and then to track and to show the impact those changes have had. How you would do that? So uh, say fix a canonical issue, you would track the site's domain authority or ranking from before uh, to after that change. Um, Redoing title tags, show the traffic and page views and bounce rate improvements that happened uh, for that set of pages that you redid. If you optimize an entire category on your uh, on the, your client's site, then group that category in analytics and continue to report on that every you know couple weeks, months, whatever your interval is. Um, report on that every single time to show the improvements that have been made there. And then there's some ancillary metrics that are really helpful in telling a story and helpful in telling your your KPI story, right? So there's um, bounce rate, average position, time on site, pages viewed per visit, and conversions per visit. Uh, I like these a lot because they help that story. A bounce rate, how many users fail to find what they need? Average position, where does your site rank and for what keywords? Uh, conversions per visit, is the site working for you? Or are you just getting people to that product page or that service or that free demo and then it, no one's signing up? Because if no one's signing up, then we've got a bigger problem on our hands. And then finally, prioritization. Uh, in the end of your report, it's always good to uh, leave your leave your audience uh, with the, with the next steps, and that could be making priorities after the recommendations that you did and you're com- you're communicating this month, or maybe you build out a roadmap and here you have how you're going to progress towards those KPIs, um, or you just are tracking where everything stands. Uh, what's coming up next is in queue. What's you know what's being worked on by the dev team right now is in process and what's already been done is uh well done (laughs) only to be tested and and put back in the queue maybe later it's also important that you know your audience um and this is going to get into a couple different meanings of that the first meaning i have is just how do they process data right um some people like the pros like narrative and they can read it and they get that that storybook feel and they go oh okay i understand this i'm able to comprehend this others just like a bullet they want to see 97 percent up three percent down etc um and then and then i i think this is actually most people but there are others who uh, just really need a chart to help visualize that data and um 
be able to process it even with more um, impact and and a quicker understanding. Um, but it also what I'm talking about here is building the best report for your audience. Um, maybe your audience is the CEO of the company, and that person is busy. Maybe they travel a lot. They're just kind of interested in the bottom line. Uh, for that report, I would never, ever, ever <laughs> put the eight-page, um, you know, thirty-graph, two-paragraph, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, report in front of them. I want them to get something as quickly as possible. So lots of visuals, stripped of excess. It's got to be goals-oriented. Readable on a small screen because they're probably traveling and they just want to look at it on their phone or tablet. Um, and then just kind of a quick bulleted narrative analysis. Nothing nothing too complex for the CEO. With the CMO, you can take it, take it up a little bit. Take it up a notch. Uh, they're very busy as well, but they're a little bit more goals-oriented, brand-focused. They're interested in the return on investment. So this report style would be very similar to the last one, but... Throw in, you know, the KPIs that you're focused on. Uh, provide some simple strategy and insights. Uh, additional metrics like those ancillary metrics that we're talking about. If, if we want to talk about bounce rate, then this would be the time to do it as long as it's helping uh, tell the story about the goals, the brand, and the ROI. And then there's the online manager or... Um, sometimes it's the SEO manager at the other company. Sometimes it's just um, like a marketing director, something like that. This is your contact if you're at another company. Um, if you're in-house, this is you. Um, you're building this for yourself and for your boss. And, uh, this is this is the person who's interested in all the details. They need the whole picture. They want to be able to take this report and then tell a story with it, whether it's in its original format or whether it's something that they'll – you know, trim out uh, a report or two within the the whole thing and say, okay, these two pages, that's all my boss needs. Um, so this report style, this is the whole kit and caboodle. This is the standard report. Um, it's got the scannable narrative, but it's also got, you know, uh, a paragraph here or there that if it might make sense. It's going to be goals-oriented, KPIs. There's going to be graphs going out the yin-yang, just as long as they're not pie graphs. Um, keep those out, <laughs> and we'll be doing all right. Um, so let's talk about where we're going to get this data to help you out. Um, I know that everyone is on a different um, analytics platform. However, the most you know prominent one, and the one that just about every small business has, um, many medium size, etc., is Google Analytics. It's free, it's useful, and all the data that it has. Uh, other systems like Site Catalyst, um, they they also have this. So we're just going to use this as a demo, and we're going to run through where to get the information you need. So. This time we're going to look at traffic and, of course, the much more interesting KPI of unique or organic visitors. Okay, so first we're going to start at the at a standard dashboard, and on the left we're going to come down to Audience, Overview, and here is all the traffic um, for Q4, October to December. Um, that's visits there. So now, see where it says all visits, we're going to click that triangle, go to the built-in button, get rid of all visits, and put up non-paid search. So this will give us organic SEO, organic traffic. Um, so now here's the organic traffic, and you can hover over these things, and usually they give you information. Today they're giving us an error. Thanks, Google. Um, and then you can click over here to visits and change it to unique visitors, and here's your KPI. <clears throat> so this data is giving you percentage of new versus return, returning. It's giving you a whole bunch of metrics down there at the bottom. What I'm doing it over there is I'm switching it to month so I can see what the trend is. It's not great. Um, and then I can export this to CSV or Excel, Google Spreadsheets, whatever I need to do. Um, this is going back to the tools that you'll need. Um, 
being able to export this data to uh, to Excel, CSV, whatever you're going to use, uh, is, is invaluable because then you're able to uh, put it all together and you know make it make it tell the story you need as opposed to uh, a data dashboard that Google is giving you. So let's uh, we'll get back to that in a second. So let's go to the next one. So let's get some conversions and e-commerce data. So we're going to start from where we just were. And now we're going to go to the bottom left to conversions. First we're going to get the conversion data. So we're going to go to goals, overview. set to all goals, let's set to goal completions, and <clears throat> scroll down here and you can see just how many goals we have set up. Um, some of them are going to be, you know, contact forms, some of them are going to be actual signups, um, purchases, downloads, etc. And then here's e-commerce. Um, the overview is going to show you the e-commerce conversion rate. You can switch to transactions if you want. And then interestingly, if you go to transactions down in underneath as its own report, then it shows you the revenue per transaction. And I think that the uh, the last report where it just showed transactions and this report where it shows revenue tells an interesting story. Um, if I just were reporting on transactions, it looked really good. But the minute I change it over to revenue, it does not look as impressive because only the transactions at the beginning produced you know a lot of revenue the ones later on didn't produce that much which is why it's important as I said earlier to look at things like conversion rate pure organic revenue etc as opposed to uh, metrics like transactions which you know you could have a hundred transactions but only one of them made you over twenty dollars so um, here's landing pages this is a an ancillary metric that um, in the world of not provided, uh, thanks to Google's uh, secure search uh, update, we don't have much keyword data anymore. And in, in that world, we're able to use landing page data, um, knowing what the content is on those pages, and then kind of reverse engineer, backwards extrapolate what content is working for us as well as what potential potentially those keywords were especially if you're doing ranking data and you're tracking where certain keywords rank and they happen to match up with your landing page data and you say oh this landing page on socks seems to get a lot of traffic it's also interesting that for our keyword rankings socks seems to be in the top five every month clearly we need more information on socks or we need to branch that out or uh, do whatnot with it. So let's go get some landing page data. Um, we're back at the top of the dashboard. We're going to go to acquisition. Nope. We're going to go to behavior. We'll go to see site content and then landing pages. And once again, it's defaulted to all visits. So we're going to get rid of that. Choose non-paid search. And here you go. Here's every single uh, visit for the landing pages. And if we scroll down, here are all the landing pages um, as sorted by uh, visits. And the URLs are over there on the left. And if you scroll over, you can see visits and bounce rate and average visit duration, transactions, revenue, etc. And this is really useful data, um, not only for how I just explained uh, syncing up to potentially uh, if you have keyword ranking data, but you can also use this um, to check in, say, bounce rates high on uh, like the second page there. It's 94.6%. Well, you know, what are we, what are we not? communicating right on that page. Maybe there's something wrong in the page design. Maybe there's something wrong with the content. Maybe the top ranking keyword for that doesn't match what the content is. And so then it's time to to, to roll up our sleeves and, and fix some things. Um, 
Similarly, down you can see where it says 16.08%. Something's working really well on that page, so we need to look into that and see if we can apply those learnings elsewhere. Last one on getting the data is just how to get year-over-year -year comparisons. This is very simple. You go to the top right where the dates are, and then you say compare to. Not previous period, but previous year. And then that way you can pull the data for, for this year and, and your previous year. And you will see, in this case, uh, we were doing better the year before. Um, but that's, an, you know, that's still important data. And even when you're doing better in the past than you are today, uh, that can, there can be reasons for that. Uh, in, in this situation, this is our own site. And during this period, we actually relaunched the website. Um, so that's one where it's like, we might as well just ignore that data uh, for those three months and, and look at data elsewhere. But it's important to be able to bring that up and to remind your boss or your uh, client of that fact. So now let's put this all together and build you guys a report. Okay, so that's kind of a tease. I said that, but when I'm thinking about it, I'm not going to do that for you. But I will kind of walk you through uh, how we approach things. So first thing first, we get all that data. Download all those things into CSVs and put them into uh, a spreadsheet. And then we have pivot tables. Um, and then certain charts are reliant on these pivot tables. Other tables throughout the report are reliant on these pivot tables. Um, also, we have uh, data for each of the KPIs that we're going to report on. We have the data for um, client metrics as well as competitive analysis, etc. You're going to have to figure out the best way to do that on your own, but um, by getting all the data in one spot, you're going to have a much easier time of trying to figure it all out uh, than you would if you were just poking through analytics, trying to build everything there, and then saying, oh, this is the report I need, because the minute you try and export that, it's, it's just not, it's just not going to work for you. So I would advise you to get everything into Excel first, build out that database almost, and then try and figure out your story. So in this one, we do uh, we have like the KPIs on the left, where organic revenue and organic unique visitors. You see the trend over the last 13 months. You can see there's a spot for a, a quick narrative that just kind of explains what's going on. You can also see that there's uh, month over month, year over year, as well as uh, today versus the contract start. Um, and then on the other slide to the right, <clears throat> you'll see uh, the split out of each segment's uh, performance over the last 13 months and uh, this month's data. So you can see here organic searches at the top, paid direct referral, um, each contributing, and you can see the trends that have happened. And if you uh, are looking at the trend lines, you can see that, you know, something like direct traffic seems to be taking off in the last three or four months, as with referral traffic. Well, that could be a number of things. That could be retention um, from the work that paid and organic are doing. It could be uh, some link building that the SEO team is doing that's actually getting um, a good audience. It's getting into different uh, verticals that make sense for this client, and therefore it's driving uh, referral traffic that then becomes direct traffic because they just maybe they bookmarked it or something like that. That's the stories that you need to be able to communicate. Um, analysis. Let's dig deeper. Let's look at all the stuff we have, and then let's be able to provide comparison to competition or look at comparison to ourselves. With the keyword positions chart here, you can see how keyword ranking fluctuated um, within the search engine for our own keywords there. And then off the right, you get a competitor comparison or a share of voice report where you can see uh, the blue, the, the blue, the dark blue, that's what I'm trying to say, uh, pie piece in the top right says client and then each one of those says site. Um, 
each one of those is a competitor, uh, and it's uh, this is just speaking to how many keywords uh, does our client have in the top 20, say, search results versus our client. And so you go through that keyword by keyword and um, and see what share of that market you're possessing. And then insight, and here's where we come back to that Avinash quote. Uh, the quote ends with, if you see words in English outlining your actions uh, that need to be taken and you see relevant data, then you're looking at the re result of web data analysis and not just web data reporting. This is actually analysis, it's insight, it's providing an advantage to your client or to yourself. Um, what's happening? What did we do? Uh, what are the next steps? Again, that priorities that I was reporting, uh, that I was saying earlier. So if you look here, you can see in what we did in February, um, in December we did this thing, yada, 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 and we believe we'll see an improvement in our conversion rates of 15 to 25%. So it's setting up that goal, it's giving insight, and it's giving an expectation uh, to, your, to your client or your boss. So now, the report. What's it going to look like? Here's the CEO version. Small enough to sit on a phone or a tablet. Easy enough to read in an email. It's got year-over-year -year data comparison, it's got traffic, it's got revenue. It's got enough of what the CEO needs. She'll be fine with this. CMO version. You've seen these uh, reports before. The one on the left talks about those KPIs, sees how they're doing. The one on the right, keyword positions and comp comp competition. Um, and then a distribution of the ranked keywords, kind of seeing where they all fall um, in a non-pie chart presentation. That's going to be great for the CMO. And then there's the kit and caboodle version, the online manager version. You're seeing landing page data there at the bottom left. You're seeing the segment analysis at the bottom right. You're going to look into conversions. You're going to look into unique visitors, ranking, landing pages, share voice, uh, et cetera. You're going to look into everything that you need to tell your story. Um, and that's going to be your report. Um, frankly, as I, as I said before, the online manager version is the one you make. And then the CMO and CEO ones are the ones that you just kind of trim out. And then that way you can save yourself time uh, building reports at the end of each month. So thank you for your time. And here's where we would normally uh, have questions and answers. But unfortunately, this is a re-recording of this webinar because we did not get the mic to work the first time. I do remember a handful of questions. I'm going to try and answer those now. One question was, how long does, does this usually take? Um, and on my team, it's a varying range uh, to do the report each month based on the template that we already have created for the report. We're looking at, I'd say, about uh, 45 minutes to an hour to just get the data in there, spot check it, make sure that it's all, you know, Make sure it's all accurate, it's the right data, it's everything you want to have, etc. Then another half hour to 45 to um, study it, to put in analysis and insights, and to then polish it to make it good to go. So uh, hour and a half to two hours is about it. Um, and that's a, that's a great question because, you know, if you're, if you're billing your clients hourly, if you're on a retainer, if you're, you know, if you're working in house, it's important to know just how much time to set aside to pull all this off. Um, so thank you for that question. So that's it. Uh, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed the session, and we look forward to having you all attend our next webinar. Thanks, guys.